legality of the cross over. I think section 68 has addressed this issue. Members on the floor on both sides of the aisle tried to interpret this section the way it suits them. But unfortunately, that section has already been interpreted by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. In the case of PDB versus Abegunde, who was a member of the House of Representatives. And the meaning of division has been clearly stated by the Supreme Court. And the so-called RAPC that we kept on hearing the chanting today does not fall within the interpretation of the Supreme Court. Therefore, we will be encouraging the party to take the necessary steps. Not because we are against our member, our members, but so that we can further continue to entrench democracy. When people elect you on a particular platform to represent them, that seat does not belong to you. That, belong, that seat belongs to your constituency. So it is important that this position is stated clearly and that we put it to rest. Welcome back to Sunrise Today. We've got Mr. George, a.k.a. a legal practitioner here with us. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, yeah, it's, it's amazing that this section has come back again, uh, section 68, because we've seen several arguments about this. Politicians, of course, have been different views, interpreting it as they suit them. But you've seen this gale of defections, which is the latest in the series of our political history. What's your impression of what's going on? Well, uh, these are exciting times, and... Uh I can tell you Nigeria is with, it has turned into a huge political laboratory. You know, we're testing all kinds of things. One of which is, it's not like we're going to test Section 68 uh, 1G again. It's been interpreted, you know, by, by the courts. In several cases, not even the, uh, more than uh, the particular case that uh, the Honorable just uh, cited, even from Amechi's case, it, the Supreme Court has said that uh, it is actually the party that wins the election. Having agreed that that is what it is, the Constitution says you will lose your seat if you defect. Provided, I you know, oftentimes when a law is made, enacted, a smart lawyer goes for the proviso. Once we say anybody who does this is liable to this, that, that. If for any reason you find provided that is gay, you just go there. That is where your client can come out from. So that is exactly what RAPC probably did. And I can say they acted it so well in the sense that they have gone to give an impression, not even an impression, the fact before Nigerians today is that APC is divided. And that's what the Constitution is asking for, division. And that division, the Constitution did not say it must emanate from a Congress. It doesn't tell you where it's going to emanate from. It's just that it has to, there has to be a division. Because that's the point of contention, the nature of the division. Beautiful. So, and like I told you, the Constitution did not say, did not go ahead to tell us the nature of the division. But with what is, it told us is where the division should occur for it to be seen as division. It has to be at the national level. It's not when you disagree at the world level or at the state level, then you say there is a division you want to probably defect. The Constitution, I mean, the court has interpreted that division to mean that that division must occur at the national level, that is the national working committee level. What did Galadima and his group do? They simply attacked the, the convention that took place with APC. You may see that they're acting. Politics is all about acting, though. They have even gone ahead to publish the names of their state chairman. You may ask, where were they elected? But the important thing is that there are 
verifiable state chairmen that belong to their own group. And they were, or they are still APC, but RAPC. He makes himself a chairman of RAPC. You may ask, where, what convention did he emerge from? The important thing is that he has challenged the convention that threw up Adam Soshimole. And he has gone to court. Having gone to court, it has become a notorious fact. So that the court must decide on it, one way or the other. But the important thing is that he is in court challenging the other faction. Indeed, it has even caught up that some journalists and some comment commentators now refer to Adam Soshimole as a factional leader of APC. So that is a faction. And law is bordered about facts. You apply the law on facts. So were they, will they be right if they call him a factional chairman? So that's, that's what the nation, I mean, that's what he wanted to create, to see himself as a factional chairman and try to encourage us to see Adam Soshimole as a factional chairman. Mm. He goes ahead and goes to court to challenge him. He is bringing the fact to the I mean, to, to the uh, for, from Bonner. And that fact is that there is a division. What has he done? He has created a room for what is now happening. Indeed, it was like pre-programmed that the moment all of that begins to take place, then these people can now latch in on this section 681G to make their exit. And that is what they have done. You may now say that it is it, that division did not arise from a, a, a convention of APC. But the important thing is that there is a division. Hmm. So what if people argue and say that, but look, how can they say that or refer to themselves as factions when in the first instance there wasn't any Congress, there wasn't any uh, process that they went through, those who they designate as chairman, of which they publish those names, and they did not attend any of all of their meetings. So how can they then call themselves properly designated chairman, even though they haven't fulfilled any of those conditions? So the whole idea is that it is now left for the court to interrogate this idea of division, this particular division, whether it is actually a division. But ex parte, on the surface of it, is that APC is split into two. Hmm. So if I could... Uh, perhaps uh, if we could second guess. And not the point I'm making, the fact yeah. on ground. I get you. Is this, because you say it's about acting. Yes. So could the script be such that, well, we need to give a reason to the fact. Now, if this can be seen as a reason to the fact, by the time we go to court, stay there for a while, who knows when the case will be over and done with, we might have achieved what we wanted. Because even if the judgment doesn't go in our favor, can they upturn or reverse all that has happened? You see, they're also playing with time. Elections are a few months away. Assuming without conceding that the court decides against them, what it will now amount to is that the law says the leader of the House, i.e. the Speaker of the House of Representatives, or the senior president will declare their seats vacant, assuming it goes that way. What is the time left for INEC to go and conduct fresh elections, you know, for these vacant seats within these few months before we now get into another election in the next few months? So the time constraint there makes it impracticable. Mm. So that is why I think. APC has taken their strides. They have just decided to play their ball as it lies by way of leaving it the way it is. You would have noticed the, the reaction of President Mohamed Buhari. Is that, it's like, this is democracy. That is how they feel, and that is it. And who went to court? It's not even APC. It is the ROAPC. They are in court. So, and the fact that they are in court it becomes a notorious fact that okay, there now, is a division. Now, uh, since there's been this coalition, the CUPP, of which we understand REPC members are part of that coalition, yes. so can they still stand as that unit, even though they 
say we're part of this political coalition. So whatever results come in, we will be part of it. So that means that they can still, as far as that case is concerned in court, stand as our APC. Yeah, they, 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 they can stand as our APC. But the point is whether, again, they are a juristic person. That is even the first thing that the court is going to determine. Can they approach the court as ROAPC? Who is ROAPC? Is it a registered party? Can they sue and be sued? Like APC can be sued Because they are registered. Sued. Because they are registered. So in other words, so you can see the mischief. But the mischief is working for them. I'm trying to because all of that will take time to determine. Of course, that's the point. That is the point. It's a strategy. This is political gerrymandering. You can see it working. So, and that takes me to, you know, what leads to all of this. You see, the, the, the APC did not manage its affairs well. You can say it started from their past chairman, you know, who was probably seen as being weak or probably was not reigning in party members, er errant party members. But more of the blame will also go to I don't know who the leader is now, whether it is Aswaju uh, Bolatunumbu or the president. But in this case, the president. Because the president didn't take so much interest in what was happening in the party. All this while. The last meetings they are now holding are what I think is uh, some kind of fire brigade approach to their problem. 